Theme park workers of Reddit. What unknown privileges do insanely wealthy people receive at your park? Worked in WDW. Celebrities get guided access to and through the Utilidor tunnel system beneath Magic Kingdom if they wanted to get to different parts of the park the fastest. They mainly only go to the nicer parts though, like the clean and pristine sections under Fantasyland and Main Street, not the gross ones where most of us worked. Though Johnny Depp ends up in the nasty parts of Adventureland to gain access to the elevators that can get you up to pirates. Fun-ish story is sort of relevant. Mariah Carey was a person we were all told to avoid at all costs, for our own sake. At least in my land. We were told that if we ever saw an entourage coming that even kind of looked like she would be in it, to just turn or duck away because she was a misery. I never ran into her while she visited with her husband and kids, but I found it interesting that her behavior was so egregious that our leaders went out of their way to warn us about her. We now have a Discord. Check out the server in the link in the description. Story 2. Worked at WDW also. Kids between 1 year old and 16 years old with wealthy parents would sometimes rent out entire theme parks. One time Hollywood Studios was rented out to a kid who I believe was turning 8. Most of the rides stayed open and multiple bars serving alcohol would be set up for the grown-ups. Full service bars scattered throughout the park. We'd keep the park open a few hours after closing for them to ride the rides privately and get wasted. No idea how much it would cost to do something like that, but it happened quite often. Sometimes the families were the coolest and would have fun. Other times, they would be snobs and act younger than the kid having the birthday. For the families who were fun, the employees were usually a lot more relaxed, due to no crowds, and would have fun with them too. In some cases, the group would be on one side of the park and we would be sending empty ride vehicles around just waiting for them to show up. We knew it would be about an hour before they would reach us, so we would trade rides. So while we operated our ride, operators of another attraction would come ride. Maybe the lights get turned on for things like Rock and Roller Coaster. Maybe all the lights get turned off and we'd ride it in pitch black. Was a lot of fun to do that. Story 3. Celebrities would often come by and it was always interesting. Some were the greatest people ever, some were the absolute worst. To name a few that I felt were the worst was Taylor Swift and Amanda Bynes, mainly because they were very stuck up and rude to employees and guests alike. Taylor Swift had asked that no guests be in the queue area at the loading dock for a ride, as she did not want to be seen by guests. Then her group would ride multiple times all while we have to hold the line, which was already a 120 minute wait, until they were done. But the nicest of celebrities made it worthwhile. The Harlem Globetrotters visited us during the ESPN weekend, and arrived at the ride I was working at just as it had broken down. Guests were bummed that one of the most popular attractions had broken down, so the Globetrotters started playing with the guests by doing basketball tricks and played on the hula hoop with the kids. Which is pretty funny watching extremely tall guys doing a hula hoop with little humans. Celine Dion and her husband visited our attraction but didn't want to ride. Renee did the ride while Celine just hung out with us in the break room. She was fascinated by the vending machine that had a glass slash plastic pane showing a moving motor to grab the drink and dispense it on the right. Just so she could watch this vending machine, she would ask each of us our order, then buy us a drink and watch in awe, as it would grab the soda and then dispense it. Some of the celebrities were downright rude, whereas others are just great to talk to when you're not asking for photographs or autographs. Almost like they were normal people or something. I love the idea that Celine Dion is fascinated by the inner machinations of a vending machine. It just feels like the most relatable thing I've ever heard from a celebrity. Like, yeah, I could see myself doing that too. Story 4. Worked in WDW, first in resorts and then in parks. The only major difference I witnessed at the resort was when we set up a late check-in, 11pm, and cleared the lobby for it, it wasn't even that big of a deal, because there were only a couple of people hanging around that late and the store slash QSR was closing down for the night anyway. In the parks, it differs by who the VIP is and what they decide. Some just go to the park like anyone else, cause a little bit of a stir when recognized, but otherwise just spend their day like anyone else would. Some do the Keys to the Kingdom tour like someone else already mentioned, but it's pretty standard and pretty much anyone can do it if they want to pay for it. And then there are the guided tours, where you have someone from guest services with you all day, and you get to line jump and get priority seating, etc. But again, pretty much anyone can do it if they pay. Disney will typically bend over backwards to support any reasonable requests. I know they've cleared restaurants at celebrity requests before, but all in all, during my time there, it was pretty low-key. Story 5. I worked at Six Flags. As most people know, theme parks have different tiers of tickets you can buy which entitle the customers, or guests as we call them, to certain privileges. For example, base ticket for entry is $45, early admission slash base season pass $60, that kind of stuff. What a lot of people don't know is that we had a tier of ticket that started at $500. 
This gives you, one, a corporate escort that will allow you to cut in any line at the park, two, unlimited food and drink, three, unlimited rerides without needing to exit for another guest first, four, a private air-conditioned lounge area where you can rest. Strangely enough, to me, it sounds like $500 is actually not that much for this, but okay, when I put it in the context of, oh, it's a day at the park for $500 per person, okay, that's a lot. But still, it's, for all those privileges, not that bad. Story 6. I work at Universal Orlando and have been for a few years now. We have two different types of VIP tours. Ones that are non-private, you share the tour with another group or two, that start around $300 minus park admission, and then private tours, just your party, that start at around $2,500. The latter group is usually celebrities or families that don't want to deal with the crowds or waiting in line. They get taken through VIP staircases, and if they're celebrities, they'll travel backstage to avoid crowds. They won't use public restrooms either, but rather our employee restrooms. They get special meals, free photos, and a ton of other stuff. They're generally some of the most pleasant people I deal with throughout the day. Can't say anything for the celebrities because I don't talk to them, though. Most are excited to be on the tour and love skipping lines on the private tour they get all day. If a company wants to rent out the park, they can. With a fee. We've had some major companies rent it out for a night, Microsoft, last month, and they got all the rides, merchandise, catering, open bars, all to themselves. Money talks, friends. Story 7. I worked at Busch Gardens back in the 90s. During that time, we had celebrities like Garth Brooks, WWE wrestlers and their families, and Hanson, shut up, it was the 90s, visit while I worked there. I found the treatment depended on the celebrity in question. Garth Brooks and his band, along with families, were all pretty low-key, though they were escorted through the park by an employee, and allowed to travel from point to point using employee walkways. They didn't really ask for much, though. They rode rides, and they were all very friendly. The WWE guys were the most low-key and the most fun. They didn't ask for escorts. They roamed around on their own and just had a blast. They were so fun to interact with. I wasn't a wrestling fan, so I didn't know any of them by name, but they were huge guys and all stood out in the crowd. They were pretty hard to miss. As for Hanson, well, most of us never even saw them. From what I understand, if they wanted to ride something, the ride was cleared of other guests while they rode. They were taken around behind the scenes everywhere they went, and we were told to not interact with them unless they started a conversation. Story 8. Big UK theme park based on bricks. Most celebs get the usual best line skipping products, free stuff, backstage tours, that kind of thing. However, we also had someone else visit who was royalty from a very rich oil country, so money no object type deal. The team I worked with had to run around with radios ahead of his family plus 20 strong entourage trying not to be seen, in order to predict his movements. When they arrived at a ride, we would clear out the exit line of plebeians and let them all waltz in and go straight on. Rumor was, for this service, it was a five-figure sum. They didn't want to speak to or even be near staff, so everything went through their minders. That's all the antics I was involved in, but I'm sure there was more, as they all stayed in the hotel on site. Okay, this is mostly unrelated to the question itself, but... Plebeians? Plebeians? I remember looking it up at one point and finding out that it's pleb, not plebe, or something like that. But is it still plebeians instead of plebeians? I have no idea. I'm in Canada, I might just say things funny, who knows. Story 9. Worked at Legoland Windsor for four years. Multiple celebs came through during that period and all received different treatment. And three people in particular stand out. Katie Prince, a truly awful woman, would regular would regularly come to the park, demand all the diva treatments, passes, VIP parking routes in and out of the park to avoid regular people, and pays for nothing. And thanks, no one. Michael McIntyre also received most of the above. As to whether or not any payments were received for those services, I don't know. But in general, he was reportedly much more pleasant and fun to deal with and less demanding. Finally, Boris Becker showed up one day at the front entrance at about 2pm, well after the morning rush. And as most other people in the park were eating lunch, produced three annual passes for him, and the kids handed them to me so I could check they were his. Had a pleasant, if brief, conversation as I scanned them through, and he went about his day like a normal person. Guess who my favorite celeb guest was while I worked there? Story 10. I worked at Universal Studios Orlando for a while running the Revenge of the Mummy. It was a ton of fun. Amazingly, we managed to fit Shaq on our ride vehicles. They had stadium-style seating, so the last row was higher up and had more legroom. I would always get funny looks from larger people when I told them they had to ride in the last row. Some thought it was a racial thing. But when I told them Shaquille O'Frickin' Neal fit in the last row, they would shut right up. To everyone wondering how Shaq fit, and doesn't get what I mean by stadium-style seating, the floor of the ride vehicle is at the same level, but the seats in the rear are higher up, so everyone can have a good view of the ride while on it. So in the back row, you have quite a bit more legroom than the first. Even larger people, not Shaq-style large, had an easier time fitting in the last row. Story 11. Work at Sesame Place. 
in a suburb outside of Philadelphia, specifically in the rides department. Every theme park has those cut-the-line passes, cost maybe $29 for unlimited uses. When you buy that pass, they explicitly say, you may have to wait one or two ride cycles. Oh, these parents couldn't care less about those rules. Since I'm one of the supervisors, I get to deal with all those complaints. Three best entitlement stories are someone trying to use it after we closed all of our rides. She made her child cry to try and get on. That was a fun one to say no to. Another one was a dad who let a child spit on my shoe for saying that they had to wait for a ride since that one was full. Final one was a parent who hopped the fence while the ride was running. All because he didn't want to wait and one of the cars was open on this ride. Not to mention the countless dads who have threatened to punch me in the face for making them follow the rules. While $29 isn't insanely wealthy like the question asks, I feel like this is still a good one for entitlement. All these people sound insufferable and OP, you are so patient for dealing with them without breaking any of their noses. Story 12. I work at Universal Orlando. One Direction once bought out the park at night after one of the concerts they had. Stayed really late and spent most of their time in the newly opened, at the time, Diagon Alley. They didn't even come to my section of the park, but I got paid, so there's that. A lot of celebrities that will come around will either just walk through normally and we're required to just act like we don't know who they are, and some buy the super VIP package that lets them basically do and go wherever they like. That last option also gives you a personal tour guide. It's like $3,000 a person or some ridiculous number like that. Story 13. I worked at Canada's Wonderland for a few years, but it seemed like every time a celebrity came, I just happened to miss them. Wonderland does offer some VIP thing though, which I know most celebrities use. I only saw Adam Sandler using it myself. Basically, you just get escorted to the rides by someone and get instant access to ride. Justin Bieber, though, is another story. Unfortunately, I hardly remember details about this, nor do I know how true they are. But I remember some of my friends telling me he spent a good, like, 5 to 10k for him and a bunch of friends to go on only two rides. I'm assuming they rented it out for a small amount of time. One of which, go-karting, he demanded to wear gloves for. Someone said because he didn't want to touch the steering wheel because he was too good to touch it with his hands. Anyway, I doubt that part is true, but at the same time, it's Bieber, so who knows. Aside from that, I don't remember much else. Justin Trudeau is apparently always nice and calls people by their name on their name tag. I still regret calling in the day he came to Wonderland. Calling people by the name on their name tag. What do you guys think of that? I think it's a very dad move. I find it a little awkward personally, but I know that some people, specifically of the older generation, seem to do it and think they're being very respectful and polite. Maybe it is. Maybe I just don't know what's going on. Do you guys call workers by their names on their name tag? Story 14. This story is about wealthy people at theme parks and privileges, but not quite linked as the question wants it to be. Not me, but one of my old bosses now works at an indoor theme park in Dubai. As head of the rides or something like that. I don't know what it's called, sorry. I heard from his fiance, who is my current boss, that one day the royal family of Dubai came to the theme park. They chose a ride to go on and got free access to go on it. They went round the one time and they wanted to go again, but the employee managing the ride didn't let them because there was a line of people already waiting to go on. Now, for some context for those who don't know, if the royal family of Dubai want to do something, you let them. The family said to the owners of the park and the guy I know that the employee managing the ride was not allowed to work there anymore and that he had to go home to the UK and never come back. That man is now never allowed to go to Dubai again. I don't know if this is a hot take, but not being allowed to go to Dubai? Fine by me. I'm just personally not a fan of places that use slave labor. Just, uh, I don't know. My opinion. Story 15. Worked at WDW, SeaWorld, and Universal Orlando. With all of them, you can hire a private VIP tour guide to take you around the park. At this level, you don't use the normal entrance. There are VIP ones, so you don't have to deal with security in lines. Speaking of lines, yeah, those aren't a thing anymore. You can be taken directly to the loading area of rides. Universal had some secret waiting rooms that VIPs could wait in so they could jump right into the pre-show. Some rides have that. And then directly onto the ride. They also don't just walk from place to place like you do. They will walk off one place and appear in another area of the park. It's kind of hard to visualize, but a lot of the rides are closer to each other than you realize. For example, in Hollywood Studios, the Disney Junior show is practically next to the rock and roller coaster through the backstage areas. Meanwhile, Animal Kingdom and Epcot have an outer street back street that circles the whole park, which means VIPs can get driven around backstage instead of walking half a mile. At SeaWorld, there are a bunch of semi-off-limit backstage areas that only certain tours will see, but you can bet the VIPs get to go on top of the shark exhibit and look down. For normal people, you are in a tube with the shark swimming above and around you. There is also VIP seating for shows at all parks, so they don't need to show up 30 minutes before to save a seat. They can stroll in 5 minutes before. Also, if you are a super VIP at Disney, aka Tom Cruise or Neil Patrick Harris, 
you might get to sleep in the Cinderella Castle Suite. Everyone else gets picked up by a private van from their hotel so they don't have to wait for buses or trek through endless parking lots. Story 16. I worked at an amusement park near DC that was visited by Justin Bieber last year. He was escorted by a bunch of higher-up people around the park that didn't seem to think highly of him. In fact, when leaving the water park, he told one of our supervisors to put his shoes on for him, which she refused to do. During one of our big retrainings last year, he was brought up, and we all agreed that, yeah, we don't really like him. Then we have other people like Malia Obama who came to visit with her friends a few months ago, and she was just trying to keep low-key the whole time. And it seemed like everyone from guests to employees was just trying to take pictures of her. And she kind of just wanted everyone to screw off. I felt kind of bad for her. But she had at least two Secret Service guys dressed as normal guests getting on rides with her friends and all that. It was funny. What a great day at work for those Secret Service members. Well, I guess it's a great day of work only if they don't have to do something. Because if someone tried to assassinate someone in a park, yeah... Fair enough, that could get a little tough. Story 17. I work on a roller coaster in WDW. Our ride has a separate wheelchair entrance that's near one of our exits, and sometimes they will come up through there with a personal tour guide, and we'll put them on there. For bigger celebrities, we bring them through the back door. Basically an area of the ride guests don't normally access, and then we will put them on the ride. We did this for Snoop Dogg one time, and if they want to go back out the same way, they ride twice, because the ride has two separate stations, and only one of them has the back door entrance. And the trains flip from one station to another. The most insane version of this I saw was when Joe Biden came to our ride. We cycled out the ride, closed the queue, and ran trains until the entire building was empty except for the cast members, and then put Joe on the ride. There were Secret Service agents everywhere, and we had to tell them exactly how to evacuate the ride in case it shut down, and where we would take them and everything. They also had a security helicopter hovering about 250 feet above the ride as well, and it was windy and loud as all hell. That was an interesting experience. Story 18. I worked at a very small, local, family-owned amusement park, and we didn't have too many celebrities come. But Noah Cyrus, Miley's little sis, came to do a concert, and after she was done, she wanted to ride all of the rides. She rode rides with random people and took pictures with the workers. She was super appreciative of the staff. The band Colt Ford used to come for years to do concerts, and would always smoke with the staff that helped set up and clean up after the concert. Owners definitely did not know about this. My park doesn't even have a fast pass because the lines are usually not long enough to need them. So if you're special enough, you get free entry and food. I guess we keep it super low-key. Story 19. I worked for a theme park about five years ago. These parks have strict rules when it comes to security or cleanliness. If Bob comes in and says that he's almost tall enough and whatnot, we have to tell him it's company policy and there was nothing we could do. If they would ask for a manager, the manager would have our back, so that was pretty nice. One particular day I was working a water ride. Water rides come with a whole new set of rules. Since it's not a water park, we ask of clients to have some clothes on over their bathing suit. I'm guessing that it would probably be too complicated to decide what bathing suit is allowed and what isn't. So they just made a simple rule to wear clothes over it. Comes in this smug looking guy with his daughter of about three. I tell him that for hygienic reasons, since there are seats on the ride, we ask for the kids to wear pants over their bathing suits. He gets mad thinking that he's waited in line for nothing. It's understandable, so I tell him that I'll remember his face. He can go grab his daughter's clothes and come back through the exit, and I'll let him in without waiting an hour again. He starts berating me about what a dumb rule this is, about how he didn't bring any change of clothes for his daughter. I don't get how you can leave the house for a theme park with only a bathing suit, but okay. And how every other employee he saw didn't mention anything to him, which again, surprised me, but whatever. He demands that I call my supervisor, which I gladly do so, so I can wash my hands of him. It was time for my break, so I sadly leave without getting to see the resolution. A few hours pass and my supervisor comes up to my ride. He says, Uh, do you know who that was earlier? I start to wonder if I'll still have a job tomorrow. It was... insert some C-list celebrity. So I ask him what ended up happening. He tells me usually they would have told him exactly what I did. But since they didn't want any sort of social media backlash from this guy, they actually ended up offering him a whole set of clothes for his kid no charge. So they could enjoy the rest of their day at the park. I'll definitely remember his face now. 